okay next let us look at uh, the the challenger failure so challenger was the space shuttle and uh, this space shuttle flew apart in flight on january 28th 1986 and uh, so you can check out the video over here This is the uh, original NASA video and uh, we will <coughs> look at these sections because this is a 45 minute video. You can have I a look at it at your free time. So 9.50. A gimbal now underway. Okay, so this is how it took off. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. So this is how the liftoff happened. And it was on its way. Good roll program confirmed. So these are the booster rockets. This is the fuel tank, and this is the shuttle, also called the orbiter. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94 percent. Normal throttle uh, for most of the flight, 104 percent. So it was going all well. We'll throttle down to uh, 65 percent shortly. Engines at 65 percent, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second, altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. And then it blew up but so what happened actually now why it blew up uh, there was a lot of uh, research that was done and uh, the disintegration of the entire vehicle began after an o-ring seal in its right solid booster failed at liftoff and the o-ring caused a breach in the SRV joint it sealed allowing the pressurized hot gas from within the solid rocket motor to reach the outside and impinge upon uh, uh, the adjacent uh, SRV attachment hardware and external fuel tank. Now this led to the separation of the right hand SRV AFT attachment and structural failure of the external tank and then finally aerodynamic forces promptly broke the orbiter and you can find a lot of detail about it at this uh, uh, Wikipedia link over here yeah so over here so uh, as I just uh, shared with you uh, uh, when the video was going on that uh, <coughs> the uh, just hold on okay uh, that you know if you look at the shuttle uh, there is this uh, the shuttle which is called the orbiter and then <coughs> the big uh, brown tank that you see that's the fuel tank containing the liquid oxygen and the uh, liquid hydrogen and <coughs> the 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 two side rockets are called as the solid rocket boosters SRB so in the initial uh, stages of the launch you need a lot of thrust uh, in order to make the shuttle reach the escape velocity to get out of the gravitational field of uh, uh, the earth and <coughs> uh, the way uh, these are fitted the uh, the uh, SRVs uh, uh, with uh, 
the various uh, parts of it right uh, uh, especially at the bottom there is a uh, the way these are coupled there is a o-ring that is used so let me just uh, take you to the video and the section 22.46 so let's go back to the video and see section 22.46 okay right over here so in this the post flight analysis was done and <coughs> this graphic indicates viewing angles for three cameras in the vicinity of the launch site the first view shown is from camera e63 at the lower right of the chart at 0.678 seconds into the flight a strong puff of gray smoke can be seen spurting from so, the vicinity of the aft field joint on the right solid so rocket there is booster. this puff coming out over here. The vaporized <coughs> material streaming from the joint indicates there was not complete sealing action within the joint. This second view is from camera E60. The smoke can be seen between the right SRB and the external tank and initially over here the smoke is coming <coughs> that is from the, the joint between this view and e over here is approximately 100 degrees with e60 and e63 side by side it is clear that when smoke is first visible to camera e60 it is not yet visible to e63 Point two seconds later, it becomes visible to E63 and is seen in multiple lobes or puffs, reaching maximum visibility at about 1.9 seconds. A third, higher resolution camera, D67, was located east of the launch pad. D67 recorded this view of the smoke at approximately the same time of maximum development. Smoke appears to the right side of the SRB only while normal water condensation vapors appear to the left. This plan shows that none of the cameras directly view the surface of So, <coughs> this is the shuttle orbiter. This is the cross section of the uh, <coughs> the fuel tank and these are the uh, SRBs that is a uh, solid rocket boosters. So, <coughs> we can see that um, from this uh, video that um, you know, <coughs> there was uh, oh, let me just go back so there was this um, <coughs> yeah so there was this uh, gas that uh, leaked out uh, from uh, the uh, the ceiling that was over here right now now this leakage was due to the uh, the o-rings which were fitted now how these o-rings are fitted uh, let me just uh, show you that also as indicated on these pre-flight photos the smoke emerged from just above the strut between the SRB and ET at a point along the longitudinal axis near the aft field joint so this is where <coughs> the joint the is there the smoke puffs occurred at a rate of about four times per second approximating the frequency of the structural load dynamics and resultant joint flexing. This greatly exaggerated computer animation depicts the flexing of the SRB joint. These are the SRB joints. This flexing increased the gap between the tang and clevis at the location of two rubber O-ring seals. Here are the rubber O-rings. Last evidence of smoke above the aft attach ring appears at 2.733 seconds. The last indication of smoke dispersing below the aft dome appears at 3.375 seconds. Film records of the assembly of the solid rocket booster were reviewed to determine any evidence of cause for the smoke. Photographs taken just prior These to are the o -rings. booster segments at the aft field joint show the O-rings installed in the These two O-rings are there. The guidance system showed that right SRB motion diverged from the orbiter and left SRB, indicating that the lower ET SRB strut was severed or pulled loose. Yeah, so due to this what happened was there was an impinge on the attachment, the gases that the, the, the burning fuel that came out and also a damage to the fuel tank and it came off. During this time frame, exaggerated steering commands and control system responses registered in telemetry data. Uh, so it is a quite detailed report as to how you know uh, uh, this thing happened. 
and <coughs> as I was sharing that uh, uh, the uh, the the way the the, uh, the 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 attachment was done was like this that you know this was the outer side and this is where the propellant was there and there was this joint and in this joint there were these o-rings and o-rings are of uh, this kind of a shape it's a kind of a you know made of rubber and o-ring is also known as packing or a toric joint is a mechanical gasket in the shape of torus it is a loop of elastomer with round cross section designed to be seated in the groove and compressed during assembly between two or more parts creating a seal at the interface now the idea is that you know the gases that come out right uh, from the burning uh, fuel they should not be able to leak out of this joint so that's why this o-rings are kept and so it prevents the hot, co hot combustion gases from escaping inside the motor but uh, that did not happen now why it did not happen uh, is concluded in this and uh, <coughs> uh, just to summarize uh, the corporation that was making this booster was Theocol and Theocol's engineers gave an hour long presentation presenting a convincing argument that the cold weather would exaggerate the problems of the joint rotation and delayed o-ring seating that is uh, you know the low the the lowest ex the lowest temperature experienced by o-ring in any previous mission was 53 degree fahrenheit and on january 20 that is was on january 25th 1985 flight with a predicted ambient temperature of 26 degree fahrenheit at the launch on that day when the uh, crash happened the o-ring were estimated to be at 29 degree fahrenheit it was much below than it has experienced previously and you know the uh, the ability of the o-ring to come back to its uh, you know uh, uh, original shape over here so that it you know perfectly you know blocks escaping of the gas was uh, suspected to be not there so the failure of the o-ring was attributed to a faulty design whose performance could be too easily compromised by factors including low temperature on the launch of the day now i am not covering the human reason part over here because despite the warning given by the theoretical engineers the management took a decision that you know let's go ahead with it so i'm not covering that part but let me just quickly show you uh, again the conclusions that were drawn uh, by the nasa in this video so if you go to okay at 78.531 seconds the main engines and crew cabin are also identifiable for seal in the aft field joint of the right side sorry pressure oh. seal in the aft field joint of the right solid rock the aft case featured a large heat affected area the shape and location of this heat spot indicates an impingement from the escaping gases so they are showing basically the damage areas uh, where the gas coming through in the case wall which appeared to have penetrated from the outside in this was due to the impingement of hot gases from the anomalous it's determined to be the cause of okay so this the is the presidential commission concluded that the cause of the challenger accident was the failure of the pressure seal in the aft field joint of the right solid rocket motor the failure was due to a faulty design, rendering the seal unacceptably sensitive to a number of factors. So they clearly, uh, you know, came up with the conclusion that it was because of these faulty rings. Those factors include the effects of temperature, physical dimensions, the character. And they basically, you know, mentioned the effect of temperature, physical dimension, character of material, and the effects of reuse and processing, and the reaction of joint to dynamic loading and uh, uh, it's quite uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the resilience of this uh, you know a material at low temperature uh, from compressed state to you know uh, to get to its uh, basically uncompressed state uh, uh, gets compromised and that led to the leakage and the whole you know damage of the uh, the shuttle so uh, so you know, the, these are, uh, if you see the Titanic example and the Challenger example, so we can clearly uh, uh, see that, um, you know, there have been uh, design flaws, there have been uh, human errors, 
right which led to uh, further research and you know looking into how those design flaws can be improved and of course you know the overall process that led to uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, taking a decision to go with it right uh, whether it was titanic so in case of titanic uh, now uh, the communication that came you know uh, there was a delay in reaching it to the captain now why was that so you know that's totally a human error thing um, in the challenger as you know you can see the engineers shared their you know apprehensions but there was already a delay three times delay in the launch of uh, the shuttle and uh, they did not probably want to launch it any um, uh, delay it any longer uh, but those are you know human error aspects we are not going to deal in that uh, let's keep focus on the technical side now these are um, there are many more you can you know uh, see on the net you know car parts malfunctioning leading to recalls and then medical devices failing dams bursting uh, you know flooding happening uh, for example uh, uh, you know some of the areas in the world that are flooded uh, uh, was the design of uh, uh, the uh, 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 you know letting the flood water go uh, properly was there or not and then there is radiation leakages that happened right for example chernobyl or the chemical leaches, leakages uh, uh, you know the union carbide plant in bhopal uh, india and then you know a lot of other things and um, a very careful analysis of um, all these uh, would lead to uh, you know our better understanding of human uh, reasons in these failures and the design reasons uh, in these failures now uh, as we proceed in this course we will learn that what is the importance of understanding this context and uh, then we'll uh, take up from there